The Milky Way, our galaxy, is the most photographed by amateur astrophotographers or even regular photographers who enjoy nighttime photography. Many people may not realize it, but it is extremely easy to get a beautiful photo of the Milky Way. It mostly depends on the quality of the sky. And one more thing, the lens. Here are our three top most affordable and totally worth it lenses for capturing the Milky Way. What's up guys? So today we are going to show you the three best, in our opinion, lenses for the Milky Way that are also very affordable. We're going to be trying uh, all three of the lenses one by one so you can see the difference between all of them. So we have all of our lenses lined down here for you guys. We're just waiting for the darkness to fall now. For star trails is you take the number 600 divided by your lens um, millimeter so for example we have the 24 milli mil millimeter uh, lens and we're gonna take 600 divided by 24 and that would be about 25 seconds for us to get our images and not have a big star trail but we personally like to take it um, as a rule of 500 so we would divide that you know 24 500 by 24 and then we'd get about like you know 20 20 frames that we could get so that we have even less of a star trail we'd like to be very safe about that okay so we're going to do the first test with this lens which is the widest one we have 10 millimeter at f 2.8 we will do one minute of exposure so 50 seconds which is 600 divided by 10 uh, I know we said that we usually do 500 rule but this, wide, this lens is so wide that we'll just do a minute. This lens is fairly big and heavy, but its result is awesome. The main reason why it is in our top 3 is because of its wide angle, meaning you can see more of the Milky Way band in a single shot. At 10 millimeters, it almost gives you a fisheye effect, but not quite. Based on your preference, it may be a good or bad quality. Uh, test number two with the pancake lens, which is 24 mm at f2.8. Uh, so as we said, it's going to be 21 seconds. So let's take a, a test shot. This lens is top choice when you have a great foreground or accent piece, like a tree or cabin or any object really. For the price, this lens is just as awesome as the 10 mm and is ideal for those who do not like wide angles. It is also much smaller and lighter than a 10mm lens. Alright, test number 3 and last test, the 50mm lens. This one is f1.8, so it's a better aperture. Oh my god, the damn it! <laughs> I'm so sorry! God, get out of here! The, pro the problem is, as I was saying, the problem is... <laughs> there's, there's bugs everywhere. Okay, enough. <laughs> It's a very zoomed lens, so it's gonna be, you know, special because you won't see the big Milky Way, you're just gonna see a part of the Milky Way. <laughs> Many people would say that the 50mm lens is way too much of a focal length when it comes to Milky Way photography. But there are several reasons why one would use this lens. The first one being that it is perfect for capturing close-up shots full of details in the Milky Way band. The second reason is that experienced photographers can assemble them into a mosaic to get an entire Milky Way with very little noise and jaw-dropping details. So it's really hard to know which lens is the best for you. Uh, one thing is sure though, all three of those are really great and affordable. So for the price, it's both are all three good lenses for the Milky Way and even for regular photography actually. Um, so which one do you like the best for the Milky Way? Me, I prefer this one. I think... Which is a 50mm lens. 
So it's a bigger one. Yes. I prefer it because I think that it gets more details and I, I like the details in the photographs and um, you will have to make a mosaic when you do this. It's not going to be as good as the, the wide camera, but you'll get more details. It's hard, but I think it's worth it. Yeah, if we talk about quality, that one will be the best. It's just much um, harder work because you have to make a mosaic and it's really, really hard. And it's not too hard, but it's just annoying if you have so many frames. Um, and but if yeah, you're this a perfectionist. Is, yeah, this is the best uh, in detail wise. For me, I would pick. Um, um, I don't even know. I think I would pick that one because it's just so easy. Uh, and I like the wide field effect. It's just. It's easy, I mean, it's, it's really heavy, that's my problem, my main concern. It's really heavy, but it's really easy to to just aim at, you know, and, and have a very impressive um, like, shot on yeah. the camera. But they're all great, so it's really, doesn't matter anyway, it's all great. It really is just based on your own personal preference, which one you prefer. But yeah, again, either, either one of these is really, really good for just the Milky Way. Yep. So we hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have your own lenses that are different than those ones and would like to share your Milky Way shots, uh, send them to us by email uh, somewhere here. And um, we will add them to our blog post about those three lenses. Make sure you include your name for the credit of the photo. And um, yeah, that's it. So we will see you next time for another video. And uh, yes, guys.